This is what we're talking about today. How did I get the cannabis plant from the plant into this little tiny cartridge? Today we're gonna talk about it. So we're here with Blake Smith and Kylie Shumway. I'm Tim Pickett. Welcome back to Discover Marijuana, where we're talking today about this little tiny cartridge that has cannabis extract oil in it and a little bit of other things in it. But how did we get the plant into this little tiny cartridge? This is really your wheelhouse, Blake. This, this is my wheelhouse. Tell us, this is how, my valley how did you get it in here? How did you squish it? Well, we have really tiny leprechauns. No, just kidding. Um, but when we think about extraction, not all extraction is equal, right? And there are certain processes you have to do. And quite frankly, the purity of your compounds starts all the way at the beginning of that extraction period. So you'll go through extraction, winterization, solvent recovery, um, decarboxylation, uh, and you can do terpene recovery during that process, distillation, and then isolation. And so all of those together get a final product of oil that you can then add terpenes into or other things to make those products. I've seen at your facility, uh, you, you know, you take a bunch of dried, dried bud and then you're grinding it up first. And then what happens once it's ground up, what machine takes the medicine out of the plant? Yeah, so there's lots of different ways to extract. You can extract with CO2, and it's basically a solvent, and it's using pressure and CO2 as the solvent. You can do cold press. You can do steam distillation. You can use ethanol. You can use hydrocarbons. There's different ways to pull that material out. And then does it just become one big glob of like a, a it's, fatty, crude oil? It depends. So like if you do a hydrocarbon extraction, typically you get this thick, waxy, kind of marshmallowy looking material out. Sort of has the look and consistency of cat diarrhea, right? And uh, but <laughs> but from there you can in, you can make different types of products from it. You know, we start talking about pie crust, crumble, other concentrates. That's one way to do that. And you know, there's different advantages and disadvantages to all those different means extraction. of extraction. So CO2, you can literally pull out 99% of all your cannabinoids, but you're also pulling out every fat, every wax, every lipid, every protein, all your chlorophyll. So now you're going to have to get all those out. And so different things, different types of extraction have different efficiencies or not. When you talk about like live resin carts and things like that, they're not efficient at all. Mm -hmm. it takes um, a lot it of It takes a lot material. of material to get that. And so typically speaking, if you have 10% material, we're going to go on the low end, mm -hmm. it takes about between 40 and 44 pounds of that 10% material to get one liter of 90% distillate. You got to grow a lot of weed to get just a little bit of product, right? I, I mean, we're talking pounds and pounds of it just to get down to the to something you can make into a tincture oil or into a vape cartridge. Well, and, and consider it like this. So you look at a tincture like this, right? So with one liter mm -hmm. of distillate, I can typically make about 700 bottles. I see. Right? For a vape cart, I can typically make about 900 vape carts from one liter of material. And that's why it all depends on what your concentration, how good you are at it. So if you're starting at like a nine, if you are up at that 90%, mm -hmm. what does that really mean? When you do the math, you're looking at like 890 milligrams of THC per one milliliter of material. And now you have a whole liter of it. Right. So you can make a lot of product from that, right? Yeah. Or have a really weird weekend you know, <laughs> with that much material. So, Kylie, when it comes down to extracted products, do you do you find that extracted products are better for certain patients than like whole plant products? Uh, a lot of patients like them because these feel really medical and they're easier to use sometimes than the whole plant products. A lot of my patients they don't want to grind the flour and buy a vaporizer. A lot of my patients, they love the tinctures because they look super medical. And do they taste better? No. <laughs> they don't taste better. And but they but like with the vape cartridge, they're not gonna smell. They smell a lot less than the flower will. 
what like when you exhale, there's a lot less of that come, like coming out as sure. just being smelly. Right. So a patients, a lot of patients do prefer these because they're a little more discreet. So when it comes to extraction, and we relate it back to these products that you're choosing, you know, there's a lot of different methods of extraction: CO2, uh, the ethanol extraction, and then there's the the is it butane? Yep, hydrocarbon usually hydrocarbon. butane. But here's another fun thing. Like, so let's say you don't want to dry your plants and get into that dry bud and you're just trying to make extract. You could technically use hexane. You don't have to dry it because hexane will separate water layer, plant layer, and cannabinoid layer, oil layer, right? How do you get all your hexane out? This is, this is the trickiness and of that, all these I, methods is they all have different things you have to do. CO2, you're going to winterize two, maybe three times, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to winterize, winterize as much with hydrocarbons. You just don't. But how do you get your hydrocarbons out? Right. And, and, and simply saying, I threw it in a vacuum oven, mm, it's not enough. So this is an exact location where you got to talk to your pharmacist. I mean, I think that this has been uh, a discussion where when we're talking about all the different extraction methods and all the different products that you can choose that have been extracted, it's more important than ever to talk to the pharmacist at the local uh, medical cannabis pharmacy or dispensary about the products that you're choosing to use, what, what extraction methods were used, and what byproducts might be there. You really need to be getting reputable products that have been tested for the chemical byproducts of extraction as well, because we know that the better extraction methods are cleaner than the dirty extraction, garage methods. And I, th and I think that medical programs tend to have a better uh, legitimacy for that as well. I, th I think so too. What, the last kind of thing I'll say on this is when you think about like FDA Western medicine, typically you're creating these compounds that are 99.9% .9 pure. You don't have all these other impurities in them, right? And you can even create a whole plant medicine where you still probably want to pull some things out. So like there are certain terpenes that have sulfurs in them. You don't want to mix those with water because you're going to make, you know, right. sulfuric acid, right? And so you, there is a little bit of manipulation that should probably happen with all plants. It's just like when you're making aspirin with willow bark. You pull out most of the compounds because most of them are actually toxic. Right. Right, and what you're really trying to get is just the aspirin part. In cannabis, there's lots of cool medicines, lots of cool, you know, different plant things that are good for you. But some of them are not. You don't want to smoke wax. Like straight wax into your lungs is a terrible plan. It's not good for you. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, sure. you want to go through a good extraction method for all your biomass. You know, the flour is one thing, but if you're gonna make even an RSO oil, make a concentrated RSO oil that leaves most of that plant material in, but pull out certain things that we know have bad effects on the body. Sure. Pull that stuff out. If you have a favorite extraction method or a product that you really like to use and you respect the extraction method that's being uh, utilized in that product, share those comments below because we wanna hear, and, and Blake, I know, especially wants to hear about what extraction methods people are uh, kind of prefer versus not prefer because there's a lot of choices in the market and we want to do what's safest, what's most effective, and we want to hear that from you. And if you want to hear more and watch more about the extraction process really in real time, we have a different video that we'll link here that shows Blake going through that entire process in a deep dive.